COP26 is going to be a complete shit show, and we knew this from the beginning. And what's really happening in these halls is the negotiations uh, on whether countries live or die, whether the populations live or die, whether islands sink or not, are not going to progress. But what is going to progress is these big announcements around climate finance, around ending coal, things that the UK government is determined to get on the agenda. And we know the rest of it is gonna, it's gonna fall by the wayside because rich countries are not prepared to go there. They're not prepared to pay their climate debt. They're not prepared to actually change this destructive capitalist model that we've exported to the whole world. We've heard this so many times, the same commitments. We're gonna give this much money to so-and-so. And actually most of it's hot air. Uh, what we really need to see is public finance. We need to see this 100 billion being met. And we already heard before these talks started from the UK that, that that commitment that was made in Copenhagen, as in like 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago, is still not being met and won't be met until 2023-25. First of all, the word private finance should scare you. You've got to think, why are we in the problem we're in? Why are all these fossil fuel companies still able to drill for more fossil fuels, dig for more coal, you know, extract more gas? It's because the banks and the financial institutions are funding them. And so these same financial institutions that are funding them are now being put front and center of the climate finance initiative. And what we're seeing now is rather than paying that money, we're going to turn to the banks and say, oh no, the banks will give you money. But the banks are looking out for the banks. And let's be honest, the banks are looking out for the city of London, which is the UK government. So it's all, I don't know, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. This investment should be public. This comes from climate debt. This is reparations, in fact. For, for many countries in the global north. These are reparations to allow countries in the global south to develop. And that money should not be in the form of loans, so they have to pay it back, so they have to find a scheme that is profitable. It should be given. And then how that money is distributed should be decided by the communities themselves. But that's not what's happening. We're seeing a huge pullback from sort of public finance, pushing private finance, which makes it really difficult. Instead, what you're saying is, okay, indigenous communities, now you have to come up with a profitable, a profitable scheme let's say take the Amazon and actually often what underpins it is we're now going to turn the Amazon into a commodity you know we're going to buy and sell it but in, you know indigenous communities they don't have the same property rights this community owned there's not the whole system in place so we're, we're trying to impose a really capitalist western model onto these communities rather than realizing they're the ones who are tackling climate change today and we should be supporting them providing money and not I mean let's be, let's be honest not financing the companies which are deforesting